Hey and welcome to the Skippy Guide on Mount Panorama Bathurst. This track is hard to master. It has incredibly long straights or passages where you stay on the throttle and being just slightly too late on the throttle can lose you up to a half second. So make sure you accelerate as early as possible out of the important turns. It's also one of those tracks where the auto clutch assist can make your lap harder than necessary. I'm using it for my lap as usual and I will go into further details during the guide. Just a heads up. If you don't feel confident with the car during downshifts, you should consider binding the clutch to a button on your wheel and use it instead of the assist. Speaking about hotkeys, don't forget to bind a hotkey for a new visor. You will pick up dirt several times on every lap and being able to throw your dirty visor away at any time will significantly improve your quality of racing. Enough talking, let's take a look at the lap. Approach turn 1 from the far right and hit the brakes before you reach the 50 meter board. You want to carry as much speed as possible onto the next straight, that's why you should stay in third gear. Shifting into second will slow you down, and unless you are driving in hot conditions, where shifting into second can give you more grip, it's really not worth it. Use the 50 meter board as marker, tap the brakes and shift back into third gear. The most important thing here is to develop a feeling for the gradient of the track. You are going uphill, which means that you don't have to brake a lot. Lifting alone will already lead to a big loss of momentum. Try to brake as little as possible and get immediately back on the throttle, because lifting for too long will have the same effect like hitting the brakes. Stay on the inside, but don't touch the curb. It's steep and will push your car to the outside. You might already notice it, I'm staying in 3rd gear to make use of the high RPMs. Shifting into 4th won't net you any benefits, it's the opposite. Breaking into the next turn becomes more difficult and your acceleration slows down. That's why you should stay in 3rd gear and power up the hill, unless you got a slipstream and want to make use of it. Then it's obviously better to shift up. You can use the trees on both sides of the track as markers and maybe even the shadows on the track, but keep in mind that they change depending on the conditions of your session. You want to hit the brakes and swing to the outside of the track. In this turn you want to focus on hitting a smooth and wide line to carry as much of your momentum as possible up the hill. It's crucial to be early on the throttle because the next sector is not only flat out, it also goes uphill. This means that you will get punished twice if you miss the acceleration point and can lose a ton of time. So make sure your inputs are clean, aim for a smooth line and be aggressive on the throttle. This turn is tricky on cold tires. You probably need to lift as the rear will snap, but once the tires are warmed up, you can take it flat out. I'm abusing the high RPMs again by staying in 4th gear and shift into 5th only once I clear the crest. Now we get to the fun part. Approach the turn from the left, aim for the right and try to hit a tight line around the wall on the right side. That way you can get a nearly straight entry, which allows you to downshift safely. As mentioned in the intro, the auto clutch assist makes the car hard to drive around here because it engages the clutch during downshifts. Whenever you shift down while you are in the middle of a turn, your rear will try to snap. On this track, it means that you most likely end up in the wall. That's why you want to keep the car straight while shifting down, which can be quite challenging, but I have a solution for you. We are approaching the entry in 5th gear and we want to end up in 2nd gear. This leaves us with a simple strategy. Shift down once before every turn. That way you make the best out of the brief moments where your car goes straight and you don't run into the risk of spinning. So make sure your entry is clean, use the bridge as marker, engage the brakes with roughly 10-20%, to shift down and decelerate down the hill. Stay on the brakes, and once the car points towards the next apex, you want to shift down again. And do the same again before the next right-hander. Stay on the brakes, 
And once the car is in between both turns, you want to use the short moment to shift down one last time into second gear. The section feels overwhelming at first, but when you realize it's only a back and forth between steering and shifting down, it's easy to find the rhythm. Aim for a tight line around this right hander, but don't take too many risks. You want to prepare a good entry into the next turn, because it leads into another flat out sector. Hit the brakes, adjust your speed, aim for a tight line around the wall and throw your car into the dip. It's important to be bold, trust your car and engage the throttle as soon as you reach the apex. The turn acts like a slingshot and if you hit a clean line it will shoot your car forwards. Stay on the inside through the left hander to prepare a right entry into the last right hander. Engage the brakes when you reach the crest and stay on the right. With a right entry you can make sure that you not only end up on the right side of the track here, you also get a straight path which allows you to brake and don't shift safely. Decelerate, keep the wheels straight and don't take any risks. Your main goal is to be early on the throttle for the next straight again. Swing in from the outside, aim for a tight line around the wall and engage the throttle as early as you can. You will get close to the outside wall, but unfortunately there is no way around it. Leaving unused space around here will easily cost you up to a half second on the next straight. That's why you should take it slow on the entry and focus on a clean exit. We are heading into the last turns. Your marker for the next one is the 100 meter board on the right. Hit the brakes and shift down as soon as you can to make use of the engine brake. Try to avoid the curb on the inside. I touched it here, which is not optimal. It's steep and gives your car a push to the outside, which can mess with your exit. I got lucky and made it without an incident point. Your last markers are the pole and the 50 meter board on the right side. Go hard on the brakes one last time and aim for the apex. And like before, avoid the curb on the inside because it's steep and will cost you momentum. That's the guide. Have fun with the cockpit lab which is coming up next. You can find the setup and all additional lab files and the databases on Discord. The link is in the description down below. Thanks for your support here on YouTube, Twitch and Patreon and thanks for watching. I wish you good luck for the next week and see you next time.